Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Harotrak and these are 10 things that you should know before starting a Stellaris 2.0 game. I had two people in mind when I made that video, people that have been playing a lot of 1.9 and are just moving on to uh, 2.0 and also people that are new to the game, welcome to Stellaris. If you found this video helpful, um, then please do leave a like so that it can show up in search results. If you have any strategies, tips of your own, then do leave them in the comment section. And please also leave any questions, uh, comments that you might have. I'll try my best to help you. And now let's get on with it. So, armor has gotten a complete rework. It is no longer a damage reduction stat, but instead it just works like a second shield so the way that this works is first um, damage is applied to the shield then damage is applied to the armor which is that orange reddish bar that we can see over here that shows the the status the amount of um, armor that is currently on the ship and uh, it's just basically a second amount of uh, hit points that you have so we have one unit of armor on this covet that gives us 110 armor points and whenever damage gets applied and the shields are down or you have weapons that uh, can ignore shields, armor gets reduced, and once all the armor is gone, um, the damage goes to the hull points. Uh, good thing about this is that also um, mining and research stations have gotten their own amount of armor, so these stations have a um, pretty decent amount of hull points and armor now, so they won't go down after three shots from a pirate ship, which is a very good thing. The damage increase um, from new weapon tax has been drastically increased. Uh, it used to be that you got like 10 to 15 percent more damage when you, for example, went from red lasers to blue lasers. Now they get a pretty significant buff up to 30 percent from 12.91 here for a large one to 1702, which is pretty significant. You can see that the mass driver from level one uh, jumps to 22.82 on a large one. So uh, yeah, these gotten, have gotten buffed quite significantly. So it is actually worthwhile now to focus on like one weapon tech, like stick with the lasers and just uh, focus down the lasers and ignore the other weapons um, as compared to past versions where you were better off just like applying research very broadly. So we have these great defensive star bases in our space now um, in Stellaris 2.0 that allow us to defend our, our realm. Uh, I got one over here with a very respectable almost 15k military power and it has all these defense platforms around it. But we have a limit on how many upgraded star bases we can have. I'm currently sitting at 8. Now it might interest you to um, hear that even the very basic stations that you just need to build to claim a system, uh, which don't have a lot of military power like this one, it's a completely unupgraded station, no modules, no buildings, no upgrades uh, so far, um, you can still put three defense platforms on those and make them actually a bit more annoying for your enemies. I've done that over here with that. That is a non-upgraded starport, but it still has its three defense uh, platforms and will probably deter pirates at least, and it will like slow your enemies down, if not uh, take them out while you are bringing your fleets forward. So um, you can do that if you have the minerals, even without going over your starbase capacity. So one of the insights from my first couple dozen hours with Stellaris 2.0 is that I had to um, unlearn a little bit my disdain for energy credits because energy credits are now much more valuable. Um, there are a lot more ways that you can use energy credits to boost your empire, do things that you used to have to do with influence or minerals. So for example, you now hire leaders with energy credits instead of influence, which is actually pretty good because you need a lot of influence to claim new systems. You can remove tile blockers now only with energy credits instead of um, minerals. Resettling, I don't have a second planet here, but resettling is now done with energy credits as well. Instead of influence, you have new edicts. Well, the new edicts over here that are being paid with energy credits. So energy credits have become, I, I wouldn't say buffed, but they have become more important. It's definitely a more important resource in 2.0 than it used to be in previous game iterations. So a sole focus on minerals is no longer um, the optimal way to play Solaris. Since we've been talking about energy credits, let's talk about minerals for a second. So you would expect that because energy credits have become more important, minerals are less important now, but 
I'm I'm surprised, but that's not really the case, actually. They're both very important now, which is actually a really good sign in terms of balance, I think. Um, you'd need a lot more minerals than you used to in the past. Um, I mean, one of the reasons is that ships now have twice the upkeep in minerals than they do in energy credits. So uh, we don't see the upkeep over here. We should see it over here, though. Yeah, you can see that uh, one Corvette cost me 0.82 in energy but 1.64 in minerals so fleets are more expensive or more hard on the minerals than on the energy to keep up but you're also going to need a lot more minerals just um uh, to to spend in the normal course of the game yeah, like you need to spend a hundred um minerals for every frontier outpost that you need to claim systems so you need to spend minerals just to expand you need to spend minerals as always to build your ships but you also need them to Upgrade your star holds, give your star holds some defenses, upgrade these, upgrade these defenses. So there's a lot more um, places that you can spend minerals as well. So you can't really neglect the minerals either. So I guess you just got to find a good balance between producing credits and minerals at the same time. So one of the new changes that I'm super happy about in Stellaris 2.0 is the fact that ships and armies can gain experience and they do become better fighters. Have a look at this fleet. So we have a normal destroyer over here, the D-I-N Mantis. It's just a regular, um, almost there for the next rank though, whereas this ship, the D-I-N Commenter, has already managed to become experienced. So it does 10% more weapons damage as compared to the to the other destroyer. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but still, if you have lots of experienced ships, um, that can make the difference actually. So I think it's even more important now than it used to be in the past um, to just take engagements where you can reasonably expect to have your armies and your ships survive and kind of build up a core of experienced ships and soldiers for future engagements. One of the decisions that you got to make whenever you start a Stellaris 2.0 game is what your military focus is going to be if you're going to play offensive or if you're going to play defensive and i'm super happy that defensive is now a proper valid choice it didn't used to be aesthetic defenses were very bad in Stellaris um, up until 2.0 because you really didn't know where the enemy was going the stations were too weak that is no longer the case you can actually um, go for a valid defensive strategy if you want to but you kind of got to decide what your focus is going to be from the get-go because it's gonna it's gonna make your life a lot easier down the line because you very clearly know what kind of decisions you got to make um, if you go defensive, you've got to save your minerals to, for example, build up the defensive platforms on your on your stations. Like I am only at three of nine, so I gotta build defense platforms on here. But on the other hand, if I wanna if I wanna like build a corvette, then uh, that's two hundred minerals that I'm gonna miss when I wanna build those defensive platforms. So that's kind of the trade off that you have to take. I don't think you can do both equally well, offensive and defensive. So figuring out what your empire is going to do in the in the very beginning is like going to make a lot of decisions down the line for you if you go defensive you know that you have to save your points to get those star uh, those uh, star base upgrades as soon as you can you got to make sure that they have all their defensive platforms that you design your defensive platforms properly that you get like place, places where the let's say choke point power is very high where you have like um we can defend a lot of other systems by just placing one strategic fortress. Whereas if you're going for offensive, I suggest you just have one or two very highly defended shipyards and that's about it. And then you use those shipyards with lots of um, shipyard building. So you can maybe build four, five, six um, ships at the same time. Um, just use that to replace your losses because you're simply just not going to have the minerals to do both equally well. In Solaris 2.0, the reaction time of your fleets to any threats is massively increased. Now, why is that? Because ships actually have to travel through the whole system to get out of it again. If I send that fleet um, from the Eye of Horath, my home system, um, to that border system, um, they're going to have to exit the system at the right spot, which is over here, move into that system, cross the system, move into that system, cross the system, and then arrive at their home system. 
That, uh, on the one hand, makes the sublight speed increase on Admirals way more important. Aggressive does have it. Um, Gale speed does have it. The Trickster trait does have it. Um, sublight speed is a much more important stat at this point, but it also encourages you to have multiple fleets that can react to threats um, much faster. Like, I have a fleet stationed over here in the Tay Terror system. I should probably station one over here, which I'm doing currently, but I should also sta station one over here in Tabalem. Just because if I get attacked over there, neither of my fleets is going to be fast enough to react to it. And the same is kind of true for your for your neighbors. They can they can probably move through a lot of your systems before you can even get a fleet close to them. So just plan accordingly to the way increased reaction times in Stellaris 2.0 compared to um, previous versions. If you do take my advice and actually have multiple fleets across um, your whole space to, to defend your stations from attacks, then you're going to have a lot of these star bases that are home to various various fleets and i do recommend that you put on those stations at least one shipyard module because if you don't have that and you send your fleet to upgrade this is going to happen these guys are going to go all the way to tatera over here to get their upgrades which is not a situation that you really want because i might get attacked from the south and then i'm i'm basically going to get caught with my pants down so it's much better to put a to put at least one shipyard module on those stations where you have fleet stationed, um, regardless of how you're going to build them out then uh, later down the line. They can always repair everything above a, no uh, a very basic outpost can repair, so it's not for that. But the upgrading, you might not want your fleet to go all the way back to do the upgrades. With patch 2.0, um, Discovery Traditions have gotten another nerf. They already were nerfed once. And now Planetary Survey Core, which gives you research points whenever you survey a planet, um, has been nerfed again significantly. Because now with patch 2.0, whenever you make contact with an empire, all their systems become surveyed, um, like right away. Which costs you a lot of, um, a lot of science points. Like I can, I cannot survey all these systems. I mean, I also don't have border access to these guys. But if I were allowed in there, I still couldn't survey them. I'm not gonna get all those uh, tasty, tasty um, research points. So my recommendation is, if you do pick discovery traditions, I don't think it's a must pick anymore. It used to be that you should at least take these first two whenever you start a new game. I don't think that's the case anymore. Um, if you do take it, take it as early as possible. And make sure that you do not research the special project that you get whenever you find an unidentified Xeno ship. Because you want to avoid contact with other empires as long as possible to be able to survey as long as possible. Hooray! You made it to the end of the video. If you found the video helpful in any form or fashion, then please do leave a like so that it can show up in search results and help even more people. If you have any questions, then do leave them in the comment section so um, I can answer them. I'll do my best to do that. Um, and if you want to see more of me stuffs, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Lots more um, Stellaris content, both Let's Play and uh, and tips and tutorial um, content is coming up in the future months. Um, so if we want to have more of that, then do consider hitting the subscribe button. And I hope I see you in one of my other videos. Thanks. Bye bye.